Yes, today we have a very uh, important guest with us, Jorgen Lorentzen. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Jorgen. It's really wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, he's a Norwegian director and you can know him with his documentary, A Gift from God. And it was sure last year, right? Um, first of all, I would like to thank you for joining us today, for being us today. And we hope that you're safe in Norway right now. Let's start with knowing you, Jorgen. Hello, it's nice to uh, be here. Thank you for the invitation. I'm uh, happy to participate in this uh, discussion and talk. And uh, hopefully we will cover some land when it uh, comes to understanding our the coup attempt in Turkey and what's going on in Turkey during the hour or so we are talking together. Norway is a really nice spring day today. It has been sunny the whole day, but still cold in the nighttime. Um, so this is, this is a wonderful time actually in Norway because we always have cold winters and then when spring is coming, it's everybody wants to get out, you know, but this is the tough time now to yeah. keep the inside because uh, it's not a total lockdown here, but people are still advised to stay at home. Yeah. And we have a, another guest who is a colleague of yours, Erdan, Mr. Erdan Dur. Could you please introduce yourself, Mr. Dur? Oh, former TV producer, right now educator, I can easily say. I'm working as an educator in St. Peter's University as a professor. Yeah, mm -hmm. life is good. We try to handle with the coronavirus as all over the world, but we are doing okay. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, stay safe, please. Yeah. So let's start, Jorgen. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to ask you, why did you make this documentary? Yeah, uh, we were in uh, Turkey the summer of 2016. And of the evening of 15th of July, we had a family dinner. And then suddenly our aunt called from Ankara saying that uh, something is happening here. You have to go to the look uh, to the news now because the flies are flying over the city very low. It's a little bit scary. So we went with our family and friends <clears throat> that were there together with us uh, to, to start watching television. And then, you know, we watched from one uh, channel to another one, and then followed what happened uh, for uh, several hours. And uh, it was hard to under really understand what was going on. You know, you saw this fly flying over, you saw some soldiers uh, at the bridge, you saw some soldiers in front of the um, airport, and things happened around, but it was not really clear. And we waited and waited and waited for someone to sort of say that, we are behind a coup, you know, because when it's a coup or a coup attempt, then of course the most important thing is to be out there immediately in the networks, uh, in the channel to say, this is us, stay, stay quiet, uh, you know, make a curfew and then, you know, do what is necessary. But we didn't hear anybody, you know, sort of behind the coup and we waited. And then and after a while we understood this is very, something very strange here. And mm -hmm. I remember, I remember very well then one of our neighbors said, we were sitting a lot of a huge group together saying that there's something very strange here. I've been through several coups in Turkey and this is not a really coup. And mm -hmm. yeah, if you go back as a journalist, you know, then I really started to think, I have to find out what's going on here. Mm. So that's how it started. Yeah, I think Erdogan Bey has a question. Yeah, I, I was saying the if you go back the 71 and the 80s, it's totally different than the those one, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And also for me, it is uh, because I became sort of politically interested and uh, aware of what was going in the world with a coup in Chile you know, in 73. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you look at that coup, you know, it's so heavily violent yeah. and, uh, and a totally different thing. Yeah, I would like to thank you. It's a very objective and interesting documentary. I think your story becomes history and in the future will be the history. Thanks a lot for these things. Thank you. I would like to ask you the one thing. 
I'm coming from the media. So title yeah. is very important for all media. Yeah. Explain a lot of things with a few words. Why did you put the, this title? How did you decide it? And do you think that the, this incident is a great gift for president from God, as he mentioned in his speech? What do you think? You know, I think everybody was sort of a little bit shocked when President Erdogan from the broadcasting at the airport in Istanbul, uh, how was it, uh, 3.30 uh, in the night or something like that, four o'clock in the night, saying that this is like a gift from God. You know, hundreds of people have died. Uh, it was a chaos. And then he's talking about it as a gift from God. And uh, we were really shocked when he heard that. And, uh, and uh, also as a filmmaker, as a journalist, of course, you, you sort of pick that line as a, as a crucial line because right afterwards that this is a gift from God because this gives us the possibility to clean to cleanse the military said first of all you know mm -hmm. but then also everybody else so um, so that's why we, we we choose it from the beginning and we, we worked on that title the whole way and uh, we decided to keep it in the end also I see Okay. Perhaps, perhaps it's a little bit internal. That's uh, some of the discussions we have had afterwards. That, of course, for people who know Turkey and know the situation, they will know what we are talking about. But people who really don't know anything about the coup or coup attempt, uh, they perhaps think it's a little bit in internal. Yeah, I was watching your documentary, and Jan Atakle, you know him, and it yeah. says. It was a show. We saw the show. Also, yeah. Professor Henry Barke says the, this was unique. Not yeah. the way to do the coup. All I know was fishy from the beginning. Do you mm -hmm. agree with them when you look back now? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Henry Barke is uh, doing a very, uh, very good interview and what uh, the way he's answering and talking in the film uh, uh, for being a, an American researcher. Uh, expert on Turkey and Middle East, born in Turkey, know the country very, very, very well. Uh, and it was just the same that we also were thinking, you know, this is, this is fishy. It was fishy from the beginning. And, you know, when I started talking with people also after a while getting other journalists, uh, officers from the military, when they're talking, they said, we didn't understand anything. Oh, what, what is this? What's going on here? You know, European officers, they, they called home and they said, uh, what's going on? And um, and they said uh, we don't know. <laughs> that's what that's the message they got, you know. Yeah. yeah, During that time, I was in news department, and we were making the news for the U.S. And I he heard these kind of things, and I said, yeah. "Oh my God, something goes on, and it's yeah. not the right. It's gonna be a big problem for the yeah. Turkey." And when I look back right now, I can easily see the cause. Yeah. What did you think when you, when you were working as a news reporter that night? How did you experience it? Yeah, I have the same feeling in yeah. your documentary. It's yeah. obvious that the, it's something going on. And I, that time later, I heard that Joe Biden was the wife, vice president that time. He said that it's the computer game. If you mention <laughs> these things, he yeah. has some evidence that it yeah. doesn't work. And he mentioned these kind of things. Yeah, in the beginning, but I am not eliminating to the things that more than 200, I think 69 people dead and more than 2000 people injured. This yeah. is the very, very bad things. We cannot accept those things. And yeah. definitely we should go detail who the mastermind, who pressed the button. De definitely we should know this, but doing these things, we don't need the hurt or give heartbreaking to the innocent people. I agree. Yeah. I would like to ask you something. When I am invited to talks or seminars about the human rights, especially the women's rights issues in Turkey, ongoing in Turkey right now, there is always a common question. What do you think about part in just that list in your documentary as well? Could you please elaborate your own thoughts on that? Yeah, this was one of the things we heard after that uh, there were lists of people that should be arrested. And of course, that is very interesting. Uh, uh, how come a list of people that should be arrested? And also we find out that they started actually arresting people one o'clock in the night. 
one o'clock in the night. That was before the sort of coup attempt were uh, were over, where it was uh, final that it uh, that it was uh, going to be a very bad situation. So um, we searched a long time uh, for these lists, and then we found uh, Mr. Perinchek. Um, uh, we talked with him. Uh, it was a very nice, interesting interview with uh, with Dori Perinchek. And Perinchek said, yes, we made a list. We made a list several years before. We started making the lists uh, after um, um, yeah, already back to nine, 2009, 2010, you know. They started mm -hmm. making lists of people that they wanted to arrest. So this was prepared. Something here was prepared many, many years before. And um, then, of course, when you have lists of people you want to arrest that are in opposition to Erdogan, then it's easy to just send out a message and then start arresting people immediately. And it was shocking to see how soon and rapid and uh, effective they could arrest thousands and thousands of people just in a few days, you know. And then you have to be prepared. You cannot just arrest a lot of people all around the country because they were not taking part in the coup at all. You know, this would... As you know, these were doctors, nurses, uh, teachers, uh, people that had nothing with a coup attempt to do. Uh, and then they just started. Uh, and then, we, of course, we understood after just a few days that this was people belonging to the Fethullah Gulen uh, group, the Hizmet. And uh, they were all gathered and, and, and put in arrest. But I would like to ask you, the, you made an interview with the parent check. And he was saying that the, I prepared or we prepared the list, but yeah. nobody asked him, who are you? What is your power? How yeah. can you make a list? Nobody asked this question. What's your reaction? Yeah, of course, I think uh, after Argenikon, uh, Penicek were arrested and also spent time in jail. Uh, and. Uh, in the Argenicon, they're blaming the Gulenists for being behind the whole Argenicon case. And then uh, he was, uh, he said he hated, he, you know, he's hating the, the Gulen uh, movement after that. And then he started to make the list of this, of, of that movement to, uh, to be able to take them uh, whenever the time was uh, ripe. So uh, I think that's the move. He's not saying this in the film, but we are talking about it, that uh, he started already when he was in prison to make the list because he, he wanted revenge. He wanted basically revenge. And he's a close cooperative with uh, Gulen, now with uh, Erdogan, sorry. And uh, of course, he can. Uh, he is uh, one of the few that can say a lot of things. He can criticize Erdogan when he wants to, or he can say things openly, uh, and he will not be taken for it. Oh, it's a very interesting, interesting figure. I mean, the leader of a, a micro party, very, very small party, but still very, very influential. Effective, influential. Yeah. Oh. Can I do one criticize or yeah. about your movies or documentary? Yeah, please. I saw the many different interview and but I couldn't find anybody from the government side. End of the movie, you are mentioning that you try to reach the president, but the, how about the prime minister, someone from the like a army or someone from the MIT we call meet. Yeah. What was the difficulty you have? Uh, first of all, if we started interviewing the people uh, that were very close to the power, or very close to Erdogan in, on an early stage, it would be hard to finish the film because we, were, uh, we had to be able to film inside Turkey uh, without being uh, you know, recognized that we were doing a critical film because then it could be, we, we thought it could be problems. Uh, so when we started um, asking for interview with, and we had tried several times to an interview with Erdogan because we thought this uh, coup attempt is basically figuring around two people, two persons are very, very important from a journalistic point of view. That is Mr. Gulen and that is Mr. Erdogan, the mm -hmm. president, of course. So we, we, then we reached out and we had a lot of material we had a lot of knowledge that we had researched for several years. Then we reach out to Fethullah Gulen to ask him for an interview. And then we reach out to Erdogan to ask him for an interview. And, uh, and as you see, uh, Mr. Gulen said, uh, yes, uh, you can come and you can make an interview. And uh, But from uh, the president, uh, 
I'm very sad to say we didn't get a response, but the response through the embassy, the ambassador, we had a close contact with the ambassador, the Turkish ambassador in Norway, and he said that no, they, they will not do it. Uh, so, and I was sure also when we when we contacted Erdogan or the president, then uh, they could say no, I can't do it, but my vice president can do it, uh, the yeah. minister of interior can do it, the minister of uh, uh, whoever from other ministers or Hulusi Akar or Hakan Fidan or any of the others. Yeah, but for it, us to reach out directly I, to Hakan uh, Hakan Fidan or Hulusi Akar would be impossible at that mm, time. I understand. Yeah, so, Miss, uh, are you going to ask a question? I have one more question. <laughs> yeah. uh, before your question, I would like to remind that our audience also is, um, is writing some questions on the uh, comment part on yeah. YouTube. I'm, I'm getting all of them. Uh, would you mind if I ask them at the end of Mr. Dur's questions? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was during the watching the, as I mentioned again, it's a very nice, very fluent documentary. I watched the two times and I didn't get bored. Normally when you watch the one movie yeah. or the other second time, you can get easily bored, but the, your documentary is very flowing. It's very nice. Wonderful. You do the interview with the Gulen yeah. and he answered your questions. And he also during that time, I remember he offered something like a different organization come together and investigate if something happens i'm going to accept the result yeah after the interview what was your reaction and from germany point from uk point and yeah. they were saying that the gulen we have no connection that involved the this kind of activity what was your reaction uh, you know, at the time when we interviewed Gulen, uh, he was uh, he was quite sick, so it was not very sure that we could have the interview. We waited for a day, and then we got the confirmation that we could uh, enter and uh, be able to talk with him. Uh, and we had the chance to talk with him. Uh, not not a very long interview because, as you can see, he is uh, he is quite weak. Yes. And, uh, and we had to take that into consideration. You helped him. Yeah. He yeah. was about to fall. And he was almost him. falling down, you know. So, uh, so we had to support him. And, um, and that is very important. When you are a journalist, you always have an ethical responsibility for the people you are interviewing, whoever it is, you know. Yeah. So, uh, so we, uh, we stayed with him only for like 20 minutes or something like that and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, had a chance to talk a little bit with, uh, with him. But when it came to the, the, what he's saying, that uh, please uh, put down an international uh, research committee and, uh, and we will serve you anyway, you know, and uh, to do whatever you can to, to find out the truth about this. And uh, in that, I agree very much. Uh, several, have, several voices have raised the same issue that it should be an international uh, research committee going into it and study the coup attempt to find out, especially because also President Erdogan is accusing sometimes, uh, or a lot of time, US to be behind it too, and sometimes also NATO and Europe. Uh, so that's why it should have been, a, it should be a push from Europe to, to make an international in, an investigation. Also because we see that in the, the national investigation is a flaw, you know, it's a, uh, they decided it in October to start an investigation. Uh, they worked on it for a couple of months, and then the, the president said, "I want, uh, I want it now. <laughs> I want, uh, I want the report before Christmas and or before the end of the year." Mm -hmm. And then uh, they did it be before they even had interviewed or talked with the most important people in yeah. that night. You know, Hulusi Yakar and Hakan Fidan is not interviewed. Mm -hmm. So and they are very active and important. They didn't show up. They didn't show up. So, you know, and uh, so it's a it's a it's a it's a very weak report that cannot be used for anything. I see, Miss Hafsa, yeah. I'm gonna keep quiet. You can. Go. <laughs> you don't need to. Okay, thank you. So before um, before asking my question, I would like kindly ask our audience go through the comments part and see the survey and fill in the survey. Thank you. So, Jorgen, in many parts of your documentary, 
there are there are the interviews there are your own opinions thoughts and it is easily seen that it's complicated and still misery who, who is behind the coup and yeah. now you look back through these four or five years what do you think who is behind the coup <laughs> still i cannot say uh, a clear i cannot give a clear answer to that question uh, we hoped the whole time that we could find a sort of a final document that could tell us uh, how was it planned, uh, who is really behind it. So we are saying that it's two theories that are in Europe, uh, and uh, the same theories also exist in Turkey. So and uh, GAP has several times from the parliament uh, said the same thing, that uh, Erdogan himself can be behind the coup. That is one theory. And the other theory is that it was a planned uh, a plan of a, of a coup attempt uh, within the military from certain groups, which we cannot say. I cannot find out uh, which single persons or group of people within the military that planned a coup. Uh, uh, and then Erdogan used it uh, and uh, sort of channeled it his way. And then mm. the, the day after, I think it's interesting, you know, if you follow that, uh, the second theory, it was what Merdan Yanarda is saying in the, in the film that it's, uh, it's, a, it's two coups. It's a first a coup attempt, he says, and then the day after, it's the second coup, at, the second coup and this, the second coup is the coup via, uh, from uh, President Erdogan. And then he started his arrests. So this is also, uh, you know, a possibility. So if it is uh, uh, a real, uh, coup attempt coming from the military easily uh, knocked down and uh, and channeled in the right direction from the president and from the leaders of the military. Uh, that is uh, it's hard to answer. It's still we still uh, lack some uh, puzzles there. Some puzzle uh, we have to put it on the right spot and then we can answer it. Mm. Can you share your remarks from your interview with Mr. Bilan? Yeah. You visited him, right? Yeah. As one of the, yeah. Yeah. What do you mean now? I mean, you interviewed yeah. him yes. because he was always being accused of behind the coup. Yeah. So you interviewed him. What did you get from him? What's your own insight through that interview? Yeah, yeah. Um, he said, uh, which we expected him to say, of course, that he is not behind it. And, uh, and uh, this is also what uh, the intelligence services in Europe say the same thing. We also have. Uh, talk to the intelligence service in Norway. They say the same thing, basically based on what the intelligence service in the in, uh, EU and, and Germany is saying, mm -hmm. that uh, we have no evidence uh, mm -hmm. that Petrolag Gulen is behind the coup and uh, mm -hmm. all this coup attempt. And uh, what I find interesting with what uh, Gulen is saying is that uh, how he's uh, talking about him and his movements being a scapegoat and now being sort of the, you can just say you are a Gulenist and then you can be arrested, you know? You can be, if you are a Gulenist, you are immediately a traitor uh, in the eyes of the, of the government now in, in Turkey. And this is not the way a democracy shall work. I mean, you have to mm. give proofs of that you have done something criminal or that you have done something wrong before you can, but now they don't, they don't bother about it. They just say you're a Gulenist, or you say you're a traitor, or you say you're a, uh, supporting terrorism, and uh, then they put you in jail. And, mm. uh, and uh, this is an awful situation. Speaking of being labeled as a traitor, I don't know if you mind talking about this, but have you received any th threats after the documentary? We have received a lot of threats, and there has been some... Um, some uh, spots or on uh, Facebook or uh, social media uh, pages where they put out a lot of what is hate hate uh, hate mail or uh, hate messages uh, against us but this is the thing that you just expect will happen when you do something when you do a critical documentary or when you do critical journalism and uh, and the hate messages is quite you know it's simple it's just like you are a traitor, you are an uh, enemy of the state, you are a uh, terrorist, you are supporting, you are a Gulenist, you are you are a horse, you are son of, you are son of horse, <laughs> you are no, you're all this uh, sexualized uh, way of, uh, which is uh, well known in Turkey using sexualized words when you are, want to say something bad about people. 
But the interesting thing is that in all these uh, uh, messages, there is not one really uh, criticism of the content of the film. And this is for us the most important thing. You know, even the people who hate the film because it's revealing the truth about what happened that night and afterwards, they cannot say that anything here is wrong. And that is, that is important for us. And that is the most important thing for being a journalist, you know. That is, you always want to tell the truth, you want to be objective, you want to put forward uh, the truth about what you find. And I think that yes. is so important also for the reconciliation of Turkey, that we have to understand that we have to talk about the truth. And sometimes it's hard to face the reality, but it's necessary if you shall be able to come together again. And now it's a deep split in the Turkish nation. And, and uh, we feel very, very sorry. I've been in Turkey for it the last 25 years, you know, back and forth and been living there for a while. And uh, I love the country. I love the people. Did you go yeah. to the Turkey after the broadcasting your movies or documentaries? No. I'm sorry right. to say that uh, we were uh, we were approached by the uh, Turkish ambassador in uh, Norway and uh, saying to us that uh, from no one we look upon you as the enemy of the state and uh, and that was very tough and very hard. We had a we had a good relationship with him and we had a good relationship with the embassy in Turkey for many many years and. Uh, I, th I think it's sad that people are reacting that way uh, for something which is absolutely necessary to talk about. What happened that night? Miss yes. Hansen, can I ask one question? Of course. Can you allow me? Okay. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned, the em you mentioned the embassy and I heard the one story. I don't know if it's true or not. I would like to ask you about these things. When you try to event like a screening your documentary also you invited the embassy ambassador from your norway and he didn't come but also he called the turkey and, and got the order from turkey and tried to cancel the event is that true and that if it's true, true did you ask him why i didn't have the chance to ask him why but uh, it is quite true we had uh, that was the premiere uh, mm -hmm. the premiere of the film in Norway on the on the cinema, the biggest cinema in Oslo, uh, and we invited uh, the ambassador to come, and he said he couldn't. And then he also uh, approached the foreign minister in uh, in Norway and Norway. Uh, yeah, and asked them to stop the screening. Wow! Uh, and that he got a message from Ankara to try to stop the screening. Of course, uh, he's a smart man, so you he think... knows that it's impossible. He knows that. Yeah. yeah. But he got the message, uh, the order to do it, so he had to do it. Uh, and of course, the Norwegian uh, foreign ministry could tell him that this is a democracy, and we are not behind the film. This is an independent filmmaker, and uh, we cannot do anything about that. Uh, this is a part of the, the democratic uh, discussion and the journalistic work. Yeah, this is the correct way, right? This is the correct way. Yeah, it should be. And like uh, we also, I must say, we really hope that one day we can screen it in Turkey also. Yeah, definitely. That is what people we are looking for. Know. People should yeah. know. People should Knowledge know. Knowledge is the best power. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the, about the movie screening. And I heard that many countries, European country, broadcasted in their national TV channel. Yes, How that's many right. and what's your plan for the future? We are still working on uh, selling it to uh, different new channels that we screen in Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Netherlands, Israel. Uh, we are working with other uh, national TV stations. And now we hope that perhaps on the four years anniversary, on the 15th of July, we will push it out and perhaps uh, it can be a nice for a lot of uh, national television to screen it on that day. Uh, to commemorate uh, the, the fourth anniversary. How was the feedback? Are you getting the feedback? Definitely you try to learn yeah. what's going on. A lot of the, the feedback uh, we are getting directly to us basically is all very, very positive. From uh, all these countries, a lot of people writing to us and uh, thanking us for doing it. And um, uh, the thing is that, you know, this is a film that is impossible now after the Kuatem to make in Turkey. 
Of mm. course, I would like it to be a film that was made by Turkish journalists in Turkey, but uh, the access to information in Turkey is difficult mm. and it would be impossible to make a, uh, make a critical documentary like this in Turkey now. Perhaps it will be uh, later on. We can hope that it will be. And, um, and it's, it's hard also to get access to information in Europe too, because a lot of people, we, we used a long time to get people to start talking uh, before we find uh, a couple of uh, several actually uh, top officers that had uh, escaped from Turkey and they were able to start telling us their, how it really was done, you know, what happened that night. And then we could understand more and more of what, uh, so to, to talk with the uh, top officers is a important way of getting uh, the real knowledge about what happened. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want to go on with the questions from the audience. Uh, it's just a I'm little keeping, bit of... keeping quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we but can I have one question <laughs> later. Okay, I... Yeah. I'll, I'll spare some time for you. So it is related to what you said. Just um, do you have a plan to continue on work this quiet time because it's still dark, it's still mis misery. Yes. So uh, is there a, a gift from that too? <laughs> we hope so. First, now we are working on, and we will start uh, launching uh, next week. On a, we are opening a YouTube channel, so we will launch the the full interviews with the people oh. from the film. So oh, you can oh. see the whole interviews. So then uh, the full interviews with Nevsin Mengu, Ahmed Sheikh, uh, Maridan, uh, and so on. Uh, and that will be interesting for people because it's more knowledge there. You know, we could also perhaps use four or five minutes from each of the interviews. So we have been working on those now and we will put them out uh, now on YouTube. And then uh, what is important for us is just go out and ask people if they have information, if they know more about what happened, if they have, uh, for example, what happened in Marmaris that mm -hmm. day and that night, which is very, very interesting. I worked a long time to try to put together the puzzles of the Marmaris story because it's also very spooky. Yeah. And, uh, and it's uh, several people that have more, more information on, uh, and uh, if they want to, uh, come forward. We are we are open to continue working on it as because we will continue working on it. Yeah, it's a very good idea because people can easily sh share their knowledge, and yeah. it's gonna be more knowledge about those things, yeah. unknown situation. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, can the audience uh, send questions or opinions to you while you know you are working on that? Yeah. They can uh, we are they can approach us uh, whenever they want to you know for uh, for uh, for information they have if they want to come out with some documents if they're sitting on anything because I think a lot of people now have been uh, you know how many we don't know how many people have escaped from Turkey in yeah. the last few years perhaps one hundred thousand perhaps more and of course some of these people have uh, have access to documents and information so whenever <laughs> we are ready to uh, to meet and talk and. Uh, what so doing. I'm again going to invite our audience to fill in the survey in the comment part that we can connect their ideas with you or with us, with our friends as well. So can I ask the questions. <laughs> Sorry, I'm eager to ask questions. Of course, <laughs> I know there is an interesting question, Jorgen. Yes. How about the Muslim majority countries? Have you ever been approached by them to go on TV shows? Uh, from who? Muslim majority countries, like, you know, yeah. Iran, Syria, or other countries? Yeah, no, not yet. Not yet, just the European uh, ones. We are working on a screening uh, in an Arabic uh, TV channel. And uh, when it uh, will be screened there, I hope that we can have invitation to, to talk and, uh, and discuss, because I think uh, a good way of, of presenting the film is to screen it and then uh, arrange a uh, discussion afterwards, you know, have a panel because there are more material and there are uh, a lot of questions and interesting uh, information that can be discussed afterwards after a screening. So I hope this will be a way we can do it also in the US and uh, in, uh, in European countries too. You know, I'm working mm -hmm. with uh, universities in the US and hope they can screen it and I can come and uh, travel around and, uh, and uh, make discussions around it. 
Yeah, after the quarantine, of course, hopefully. Because we had now, we had to wait for a while. <laughs> yeah, perhaps, yeah. perhaps you can start planning for something in the fall, but uh, we don't know even the fall, you know. Yeah. Actually, you know, we were talking uh, to screen it here in the US all together, yeah. making a premiere uh, in spring, but we cannot spring out. No. So, um, Mr. Dush, I think you yeah. have a question. Okay, I have a question. Okay. Yeah, let's go back end of the documentary. A refugee yeah. kid, it yeah. affected me too much. Me too. And he was saying that I am going to be a writer. I'm going to be the novelist. And I'm going to write what happened to us. Yeah. And when I write this, my first sentence will mm. be, he was saying that this is the true story, real people's story. Yeah. And it affected me too much yeah. for maybe one family, one kid, but there are yes. a lot of families, kids yeah. like that. Looks like the kids and women have too much heartbreaking about this. Yes. What do you think? What is the behind the scene for this interview part? I agree with you so much. Uh, it's a heartbreaking story and it's a wonderful kid too. You know, he's very honest and direct yeah. the way he's talking. And it's a lovely, lovely family that we met and uh, that they're talking about the situation and they escaped, uh, critical escape from Turkey. So um, uh, we know that how many hundreds of kids are now in prison in Turkey because yeah. so there are thousands of mothers uh, with their kids in the prisons, innocent, uh, totally uh, have not been doing anything. They're totally political prisoners. Uh, we know there are a lot of kids that have been escaping with their families to Europe, trying to survive in new countries. So uh, we wanted to end with this little boy because uh, this is the hope for the future. You know, he will tell the stories and yeah. he will not be the only one telling the story. There will be a lot of youngsters, a lot of kids, you know, that are growing up now will tell their stories about what happened, about their family story, about the suffering and, and so on and so on. So... Um, yeah. It will be a, I think it will be a tough time for Turkey for many years when all these stories are coming out about the, the sadness and the sorrow and, uh, and the pain after this uh, crazy coup attempt. And I think it's going to be a lot of movies about these things and they will write yes. this story based on the true story. This yeah. film based on the true story. This kind yeah. of things yes. we will hear a lot. Yeah. You know, they're still making films about uh, coup in 1973 in Chile. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, and they're still making films about the Second World War, of course. So there will be a lot of stories coming out also about this, uh, this coup attempt. Yeah. Okay. There is another question from the audience, Jorgen. Yes, Why do you think uh, has Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu changed his mind? In the beginning, he was saying that the coup is a theater. It's not, it's, it's not a real one then he preferred to be silent somehow. What do you think? Uh, it's hard, it's hard to, for me to answer that. He was very clear in the beginning about uh, his reflections, but he didn't get any response to it. And uh, perhaps he has been a little bit scared also because uh, the situation now is Turkey is tougher because of the invasion and, uh, and the war in Syria. Uh, yeah. And Erdogan is uh, the president is much more uh, tough against criticism because of the the invasion of Syria. So I think that can be a part of it uh, also. Uh, but I would like to discuss it with him. Yeah. <laughs> Why he's not keeping up the criticism? And, uh, uh, but I guess he still means the same thing that he said in the beginning. That's yeah. my impression. How do you feel about the, I know this is a very hard question, it's vague, but yeah. how do you feel about the future of Turkey, near future? Are you optimistic? You have to be optimistic. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, in I terms mean, of justice, the, you know, yeah. political prisoners in, you know, this, there was a you know, very important yeah. uh, happening in Turkey in the parliament last week. They yeah. discussed the release of many prisoners from the yeah, prisons I about know. pandemic, but the yeah. political prisons are still there in jails. So yeah. I know we have to be optimistic, but in the very near future, do you think justice, 
yeah what's your opinion about justice and yeah of course i don't think it will be any justice as long as the the president is still there in power uh, for him any kind of justice will be very painful for himself so that will i'm not thinking about that as a possibility at all i don't think anybody think that as a possibility and we can see it also around the discussion now of the pandemic and uh, and releasing prisoners of course for him criminals murderers they are not as dangerous as the political prisoners he can release you know uh, criminals but he cannot release the political prisoners because they are much more dangerous for him and uh, mm. and this will be the situation still for a while but then uh, we know from history that uh, a tyranny will never ever survive for a long time. It uh, will meet its end and then something else will come up. And uh, we can see hope also. We saw the, the election in Istanbul and Ankara uh, and Imamolo won, uh, won the election in, uh, in uh, Istanbul. That was a really surprise for uh, the president and uh, a big victory for the democratic forces in Turkey. So there are possibilities, and uh, but it can be painful before we can again start talking about uh, establishing a solid democracy in, in Turkey. Yeah. And of course, you'll still have the war going on in Syria, which yeah. is also damaging to Turkey. What do you think about, uh, you said that we need to end this, the tyranny. Yeah. yeah. What are the individual and organizational responsibilities to end this? What can be done? And I want to touch on a very controversial yeah. issue. Yeah. Many people, uh, many different communities in Turkey can not still come together yes. to resist this tyranny. So what can be done? Of course, this is the best thing for the tyrant. You know, that's when the opposition is split in several groups and are not able to, to cooperate. And we see that in, in history for so many times that it's so hard to, to work together. Uh, but here, I think in Turkey, it is now so important because working together now to end this situation, to, to again establish a, a democracy, will also strengthen the, the, the democracy because that shows you that people can work together. Uh, from different religious groups, different ethnic groups, uh, different uh, political groups, that you actually can work together because we want to establish a solid, a profound uh, working democracy, you know? And for doing that, we have to work together. Even if we disagree on things, we have to see that we have to work for solid, good democratic principles. The rule of law, it's the most important thing, of course, the sharing of power between uh, the judging and the, and the deciding, the parliament, the, the, the government and, and the law, it's so important. Check and balance is very important. Check and balance is the it's you know, very most important. important you know, yeah. Yeah. We could witness this unity in these last three or four weeks about this release from the yes. prison. Secure. Many people came together. So yeah. we could do that, this unity. Yeah. We, we should go on. Absolutely. And there's another question, a very interesting one, about yeah. the documentary, the content of the documentary. Are you going to allow me one more question later, <laughs> this question? Yeah, of okay. course. We will have. So one of the audience asks that you never mentioned the jets that uh, flew from the NATO base. What do you say about it? Uh, which uh, jets, uh, because there are several jets flying around uh, in, in, uh, in Turkey, and I haven't been able to sort of, as you know, you, in the film, you can see that I've been able to find out all the movements of the ships during yeah. that night, because I get access to the total mm -hmm. information of the other moving on the ships. I don't have the access to all the all the jets that were flying back and forth okay. uh, in Ankara or Istanbul or, or other parts of Turkey. So I cannot really tell fully the story about the, about the jets. We, we tried to follow and did a lot of research on, uh, on the bombing of the parliament and uh, the F-16 that was bombing the parliament and the F-16 that was also uh, bombing the, the, the palace or outside of the palace, mm -hmm. you know? because both of these two bombings are also very, very spooky. Uh, I mean, the sort of bombing of the parliament is uh, it's not really damaging the parliament very much. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, hitting a side building. And if 
uh, uh, F-16 wanted to bomb the parliament, it would be the easiest thing, you know, in the world to do because uh, they know if they want to hit a target, they can do it uh, on millimeters. And the same thing with the palace of the of the president. It was also uh, a bomb hitting outside of uh, of the garden, and and it also was three o'clock in the night or something like that. And at that time, the coup was over. It is a meaningless things. So I really wanted to get deeper into understanding both of these bombings and both and uh, and get access to who f who were flying it. What was the commanders here? What uh, what uh, kind of messages were sent out? And uh, we got very close, I can tell you, but uh, not close enough to be able to to put it in the in the film because I don't want to have anything that is speculative in the film. Uh, I have to know fully that this is the truth and this is the full truth before we put it in the film. So we have material about uh, the jets, especially in Ankara, but it was not. Uh, uh, fulfilling or from a journalistic point of view to, yeah. to bring it into the to the film but there uh, if you get more material there it can be a very very interesting story too yeah mr dur okay thank you so much i appreciate it i want to go back to documentary my approach is always human and humans live their life right yes and i saw the family and they lost their son, like a very bad position, like a lynch. And the father showing the picture, I sent my kids like this, but right now they lynch like this and showing an, another part of the back of yeah. the picture. And it was very bad. And mom didn't speak, I think. And later I saw the one scene from the cemetery. Yeah. And she kissed the how do you call it? Thump, I think, yeah. and said that in the future, it's going to be clear. We are going to be relaxed and yeah. you'll be good. Yeah. It's very dramatic. And yeah. you can write the one book with these yeah. two sentences. That's true. What do you think the behind the scene? Can you tell us more about the interview part? It's also a very, very strong and wonderful family that had a very, very tough situation, you know? First, searching for their son for mm -hmm. more than a week to try to, to, they didn't hear anything. Try to find him, they didn't, found, they didn't find him. They couldn't find any information about him until I think 11 days afterwards, someone told them that perhaps yeah, you will search there and <clears throat> you can find him there. And then they went and, uh, and they, uh, someone said that perhaps this can be your son you know, and they, and they couldn't almost recognize him. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it was very, very, it's a, it's a, it's a tough, uh, it's a tough interview. We were crying when we were, when we were uh, interviewing them and, and talking with them because uh, it's so sad to see. And uh, <clears throat> of course, through that interview, we got access to a lot of material about what happened on the bridge. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly we saw it's a totally different story going on here. It's not the story that we have heard from the bridge that it was uh, uh, soldiers sh shooting on uh, uh, civilians only, you know, because right. afterwards we could see that it was the civilians, which mm -hmm. is not, they were organized civilians, most of them, attacking right. the, the, the cadets and they were young, they were young kids. Uh, nice. And the police just uh, withdrew we, I, because I think I'm one of the few or we are, we are among the few that have actually got access to material from nine o'clock in the evening until seven o'clock in the morning. So we, I've gone through and see every minute of what happened on the bridge during that night. And it's scary, you know, it's scary to see how well organized it is. Yeah. I've seen the paramilitary groups uh, organizing and uh, sending out people. <clears throat> so it's a total different story as to what's going on there. And, and it's sad for this family because they know that someone killed him. They lynched him uh, in, a, in a brutal way. Yeah, and these yeah. people, these people that killed him, lynched him in, a, in this brutal way, no one are trying to persecute them or go after them and, and say you have to be responsible in front of the law for what you have done. And one of them was yelling, we killed the four, it's yeah. going to be the fifth. I can't believe how people believe. hurt someone. Yeah. And it was thousands of police right around the corner. 
yeah. and the police could easily intervene. They could easily stop it. As you see in the film, the police just say, please enter. Yeah, uh, I got, I got shocked with the, yeah. that police words. We are not going to allow, but if you want to go, you can go. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. kind that of thing is that? Yeah, that, I, I will tell you, that is not the way the police usually talks in Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I got shocked. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I am keeping quiet, Ms. No. Arsaygen. But I agree with you, the human aspects. Yeah, believe me, of this my approach is the human. Is of course Everybody is alive to thing. live. Because there are so many people that are, we can count out to perhaps one million people that are directly now uh, in pain because of what happened that night. I see. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Lots of comments. They are grateful. Our audience is very grateful for the documentary. They are thanking you. Thank uh, you. We thank you too. And Mr. Dur, if you have any questions, further questions, we can go on with you. Yeah, you just the, he interviewed a couple of from the army person and a very yeah. intelligent person. They have a PhD, many different, but right now, Turkey cannot use or cannot benefit from them and it's okay. very bad for the turkey yeah. and they finished many colleges many universities as i yeah. mentioned they have a phd but again they are working yeah. for someone else other country yeah. it's very good for the world yeah because right now we cannot mention oh i am from this i am from this we are from world yeah. and in the world for everybody there is a room to live Mm. Definitely, they are going to find a better life, but definitely they would like to go back to their country and serve for their country. Of course they want to. And, uh, and it's a huge loss for Turkey because these are well educated, uh, doing a wonderful job for many, many years in the Turkish military and suddenly they are just kicked out. Nice. Uh, and when I've talked to several of these uh, top officers, they feel ashamed. Or what's mm -hmm. going on in the Turkish military? Because they see they don't know the rules anymore. You know how they're greeting each other, how what's it, how they are marching, what they're doing. You know a lot of things they are mentioning to me when we were interviewing them and talking together. I think they have a little bit difficult to explain the situation to their kids, right? Yeah. As far as I understand from interview, they have a difficulty because all the relatives in Turkey and yeah. they try to connect with them but somehow they cannot and it's yeah. very difficult to small brain small kids to explain this kind of things of course it's very very tough for parents to explain this to your kids because uh, the kids will uh, one day they will hear from others that you know that your father is a traitor mm -hmm. uh, things like that of course this is very very difficult and and, uh, and heartbreaking to yeah. discuss uh, with your kids that people in Turkey, they call me a traitor. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, it's uh, it's heartbreaking, really. I see. And mm -hmm. there are a lot of these people now in uh, mm -hmm. all over Europe and US. I see. Yeah. Okay. We, can, we can watch the documentary on Amazon Prime. Are there any other platforms that our audience can go find? They can find it on uh, Vimeo and uh, on iTunes, they can also find it and, and, and watch it. Yeah. So it, it's available also uh, in the, the Vimeo link. It is uh, available both in, uh, and uh, also of course in the iTunes. It's available both with Turkish subtitles mm. and with English subtitles. So it's Good. possible to both, uh, yeah, to understand it uh, from Turkish speaking people and from English speaking people. That's a very important information. Yeah. Thank you. Are we actively on the social media that we can follow you, your work closely? You mentioned the YouTube channel. Yeah, uh, we will be more active now because we have been working on finishing these interviews. So mm -hmm. we'll start, uh, so that uh, will be on the Integral Film. That's our film company. Mm -hmm. uh, Integral Film, you can uh, see it on the, on the film. Uh, this will be our YouTube channel that we will launch these interviews and then we will be more active also pu putting new material out there. Yeah. And uh, we will also put some interviews there that we didn't use in the, uh, we didn't have space for it in a way for a one hour documentary with two lawyers, two well-known lawyers in, mm. in also talking about the situation when it comes to human rights 
and I find this yeah. is also very, very important. Yeah. Before wrapping up our talk, uh, I'm going to go back to you, Mr. Dur, but I want to remind the survey on the comments part again. If you go, if our audience go, can go to that part and fill in the form, it's going to help us to better ourselves in our work. So, Mr. Dur. Yes. Do you want to say anything to wrap up our talk? Yeah, it was, very, it was very <laughs> informative and Maybe don't get me wrong, you can think about the stupid question, but I saw in one place as a comment, yeah. who support you as a financial? Yeah. They are saying that <laughs> it's real US, yeah. Ulan follower, who support you? Yeah, yeah. We heard uh, in the beginning that we were supported by CIA, Gulen, yeah. <laughs> and then US and so on. No, I mean, uh, in Norway, it's a very good system for supporting uh, documentary film. Uh, uh, from the states, so we have the the main uh, supporter will be what is called the Norwegian Film Fund, mm -hmm. and uh, they have supported most of their costs for the film, okay. and then we also have got some support from uh, from uh, the free uh, free speech movement in Norway, which is also a strong foundation, uh, supporting all kind of projects on free speech, and uh, then we have got from some other uh, small foundations in Norway like the Bergesen, which is also supporting free speech and uh, artist uh, wow it's it's and, very nice uh, it's fun, yeah. Yeah, if i if i go to norway can i get this money if i want to try to make a documentary if you work with us you can yes <laughs> if you promise to work with us <laughs> thank you so much thank you i appreciate that so, thank you so much Ms. Hafsa. ah thank you so as a last comment jorgen what do you suggest as our audience in order to do to ensure the human rights in Turkey to help to support them to be a voice of those voiceless people yeah speak out of course that is always the most important thing uh, a lot of people when they are fleeing the country and they're living uh, as refugees around in the world often they are afraid of speaking out but this is so important and of course also organize to be organized uh, support each other uh, come together and uh, search for the truth and tell the truth always. Don't uh, fall into speculative and conspirator, uh, conspiracy theories. That is very, very dangerous. And it's easy to do, you know, for a lot of people when they are feel haunted or they feel like they're, they can, uh, they want just to put out stories to, uh, to bash uh, the president of Turkey or anything like that. Stay away from that, you know, be honest and, and put out the, the real stories. That's what we need. And, and participate in the discussions and don't be afraid of participating in open discussions also against you know the the people that are putting out hate mails and hate uh, messages on the internet uh, it's important to confront them and discuss yeah. and of Thank course uh, spread uh, spread the film yeah. Yes, we will absolutely. <laughs> That's why I uh, just ask about your social media appearance because yeah. when our audience and when we can follow you closely, we yeah. can spread it and we can see if you are working on the second, yeah, uh, the second documentary. Yeah, definitely so, should be second, third, yeah. fourth. Yeah, it third. will be. And refugee yeah. also another topic. <clears throat> definitely, yeah. somebody yeah. should follow the countries and do the documentary about those things. It's very open-ended documentary yeah. part right now as far as yeah. i understand from yeah. my perspective that's true yeah thank you jorgen for your great work for joining us today and thank you, we Hafsa. are looking forward to uh, seeing your next steps your next moves documentaries thank you so much Hafsa, and thank you Ardan, for uh, my pleasure looks like you know, like your good. documentary i am checking right now one hour passed how quickly yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so quickly that's yeah. always like it is. Thank when you are in a good Turkish uh, situation, you know, sitting around the table eating together or having a good conversation, time is running. Okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. This is how thank it is. And thank you, Mr. Dur, for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me for this yeah. lovely, very nice, informative converse conversation. Yeah. So I, again, before going away, please, please, please fill in the survey that will help us to better ourselves and take care. Stay safe, everybody. Yes, we have to.
Have a great one. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night. So yeah, it was great.